killing competition. I want it all. I'm focused. Let's go and get it. Go and go and get it. Let them focus. Say let's go and get it. Killing competition. I'm all about it. Spin that bread and make it back. Ain't worried about competition. Put them on cardiac, popping bottles and all of that. You, you, you know I'm all of that. I, I, I keep the crowd jumping like I gave them a party pack. Call audibles like a quarterback. Rock, burger. I'm still in killing these niggas up. I'm getting away with murder. I catch the wave of the track. I'm gnarly just like a surfer. I, I, I'm so, I, I'm so hot and I ain't even just. All right, it's Tuesday night, so that means it's time for the Jeff Mayweather Radio Show. My name is Alex Eiserman, and joined by the man himself, Jeff Mayweather. Jeff, how are you doing tonight, sir? Good, please, so. Not too bad. Ready to make that trip out to, to Oklahoma and, and check out some MMA fighting with, with King Mo on Thursday night with Melator? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to that, but tonight we're going to talk a little bit about boxing, uh, of course. And we're going to be joined the second half of the hour by uh, by ring card girl extraordinaire Ashley Ferrer. She'll be joining us, but right now we're going to be joined by by uh, a guy that's got quite a big match coming up here in a couple of weeks. Right now his record stands at 25-1, and one, uh, Fernando Guerrero. Fernando, welcome to the show. You're on the Jeff Miller Radio Show with myself and Jeff. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Fernando, last week we had on Peter Quillen, so we, we had to give you equal opportunity uh, to, to join us and, and, and give your side of the fight that's coming up. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, for those that don't know, February 9th, the Barclays Center in, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, Peter Quillen, Kid Chocolate's putting up his, his WB, WBO title uh, against. Uh, Fernando Guerrero. So, Fernando, how are you feeling about the fight? How are preparations going? Preparations going great. Um, no, no injuries. No, no, n nothing bad. Everything is uh, positive, and we're ready to go. Yeah, so you, you'll be fighting here in Brooklyn. Uh, how's that feel? Your last fight was in Humble, which I used to live right out by there. But now you're you're taking a big step up here in, in venues. You're going all the way to to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. What's that going to be like? It's going to be great. It's going to be like um, I'm in my hometown. You know, I'm used to fighting in big arenas uh, with a lot of people, so I'm used to it. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, uh, you know, as a trainer, any difference for, for fighters when uh, that, that you notice when you have, like, a, a huge mass arena as opposed to maybe a smaller, more quiet place? Like, you know, I mean, obviously, Fernando's been in big arenas, but, you know, his last fight was in Humble, which is a smaller venue, and then you have this, this huge place like the Barclays Center. You know what? I cannot hear you at all. Your your um your phone is very distorted. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Maybe I had the phone too far away. No. Is that better, Jeff? <laughs> What's that? I'm trying every method I can to try to to hear you clearly, but I can't. All right, Jeff. I'll, I, you know, I'm going to try. Actually, I'm going to call on another phone here. But uh, uh, Fernando, are you hearing me okay? Yeah, I hear you great. All right. So it must be a, and, uh, a problem with Jeff's phone there. He has that cricket service, so you know he must be having some difficulties there. So Jeff, yeah. let me know if and when you can you can hear me well. We'll <laughs> we'll carry on with you. Oh, uh, now he can hear me now that I'm knocking his cricket service. So 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 you with us now, Jeff? Huh? Uh, so you still can't hear us? I cannot hear you. All right, well, I'm going to carry on with Fernando. <laughs> Maybe you want to call and hang back up. Maybe you have a bad connection, Jeff, and we'll carry on with Fernando for a second here and, and try to get your situation uh, worked out. Uh, while we're doing that, Fernando, just, uh, you know, your thoughts on Peter Quillen, uh, you know, tough guy. Uh, you know, you got a shot at title here. You know, I know you weren't too familiar with him when, when you got named his opponent, but, but as of right now, what do you know about him? Well, you know, um, tough guy, nice guy. Um, we're we're just ready to fight. You know, um, it's a business. Um, he 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 has his his world title championship, and um, you know, um, he wants it. And I mean, he got he has it, and I just want it. You know, but other than that, 
He's a real cool guy. Um, a good story and everything. And we're just we're just um trying to we're just trying to give a good a good fight for the crowd. You know. Right now. You know, you, you obviously, you guys have both lived in the United States for most of your life, but, but you have the Dominican roots and he has the Cuban roots. Uh, you know, he was really careful to say that, you know, he, he has a lot of fans that are Dominicans and friends, so he didn't want to turn this into a, you know, Dominican versus Cuban thing, but it always seems with, a, with a, especially with a, the Latin American fighters, it always turns out that way. So, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, the Cuba versus Dominican thing, and, and are, you, are you trying to make it like that? Uh, no. Um... I'm not trying to make it like that. Um, it's just that you know when I do fight, I fight for my Dominican people. I fight for, I fight for whoever, who, whoever you know, whoever who has a dream, whoever is 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 trying to make some something of themselves. That's what I fight for. You know, I got a lot of um, um, American fans. I got a lot of um, Mexicans. I got a, a everybody. So. But I'm just Dominican, and, you know, it just happens to be the place that I'm from, and um, which I adore. But other than that, no, it's like, you know, like I said, it's just, it's just, how, it's just how the business works. Right. Now, uh, I guess Peter said it was a big thing to you because uh, it was understanding there's never been a, a Dominican middleweight champion. So is that something that's really important to you to be the first one to do that? Uh, yes. That, that, um, you know, Ever since I've been, I, I was young, the only person that I could ever admire and look up to was um, Sammy Sosa, and Sammy Sosa is a baseball player, you know. So now, you know, um, I just, I just know that it's bigger than 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 just boxing, you know. I know that if um, I know that if I do this fight and I and I and, and once when I win this fight. Um, Dominican Republic is going to come out and it's going to better. It's just like, remember how nobody even knew anything or cared about the Philippines until Manny Pacquiao came out, and now their whole country is way better now because of uh, Manny Pacquiao. So it's not about just boxing. It's more about bettering a country because once, once, when, um, once when I win this title, I know that um, I have the attribute and I have the, the knowledge to better my country, um, better, you know, better my hometown in, in Salisbury, in Salisbury, Maryland, better my whole country, and 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 just make somebody, make somebody another, uh, make somebody else a champion, not not just from boxing, but from any anything else, you know, it's just it's just possible once when they see a champion, you know. All right. Uh, you mentioned uh, Sammy Sosa there. How was it, you know, when, when he had his downfall there? How do the people perceive him at this point? Well, you know, um, you, in, in, every, uh, um, in every sport you have your ups, ups and downs, you know. But um, I, I still look up to him. You know, he's, um, he's Dominican, and, and he, he, I mean, you know, you got to think about the things that he did, you know, the hospitals that he did, the, the – the, the publicity, and he made a little kid believe, like me, you know. Um, I know that there were way more better baseball players just because of Sammy Sosa. So, uh, and, and, and like I said, I, I'm not even a baseball player, but I knew that I could do something just from, just from him. So positivity follows positivity, you know. All right. So now going into this fight with, with, with Peter, you know, other than he's, you know, the fact that he's a tough guy, uh, you know, what, what do you know about him as far as, you know, his strengths and weaknesses and, and what you think that you can uh, exploit? Well, I think, you know, it's like, um, it's like I was telling my, 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 my spawn partners today and I was telling my coach today, um, a lot of people think that they have it until they get in the ring, you know? And I really want to, and I really want to know and I really want to see what, what, what I'm made of. You know, a lot of times, a lot of people, they get in, they're like, yeah, I know I can do that, you know, but um, you never know until you're in that ring, you know. So I really want to prove myself, prove to the whole world, but most honestly, I want to prove to myself that I'm champion material, you know. And um, 
I, I've, 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 I've been doing this my whole life. You know, I had 140 amateur fights. Um, I lost some. I, I won a lot, and, I, and, and the ones that I lost were the most ones that I that I just um, I just knew that I always grew, you know, and 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 this is the place that I'm that I'm in now. You know, I'm never gonna give up because, like I said, it's not just about boxing. It's 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 if once when I win this, uh, I'm gonna it's gonna open the doors for me to. Um, to do a lot of stuff. So um, if I don't give it my all, then I'm being selfish to everybody else. Okay. Uh, I think, Jeff, we just got you back in here. How's your reception now? Can you hear a little better? It's great. It's great. All right, so now we got you back. <laughs> all right, good. We're glad we got that sorted out. Cause, um, anyway, I was going to... He was just talking about, uh, you know, what he knows about uh, Peter and, and, and the strengths and challenges that he has um, or the advantages he has over Peter. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts on this fight, uh, how you see it playing out as far as, you know, uh, let's say from Fernando's standpoint, what he needs to to uh, take advantage of to, to win the fight? I mean, um, I mean, both guys are very, very, very talented fighters. Um I've seen Guerrero fight on maybe only on three occasions, and even though Peter's from my hometown, I haven't really seen him fight. Only I only seen him fight twice, and so to be honest, with that little that little knowledge about either one of them, I don't really know what strategy will work for either one because I have, I'm not really that familiar with with either one of them enough to to say, you know, I think that it should play out this way or this person should do that. Because I just I, I'm just I just don't have enough you know enough visual information to uh, you know to come up with a game plan to say that you know that Fernando should do this or he should do that. I mean I just you know I just don't have enough information. All right now uh, you might not know him specifically uh, his particular um, fighting, but the one thing you need to do you do that. Can't speak tonight. The one thing you do know about is a trainer, Virgil Hunter. Jeff, uh, thoughts on him? I think Virgil, Virgil, um, of course, right now. I mean, he's a very, very hot trainer, and but most importantly, you know, it, even as just as a trainer, I think Virgil's a great, he's a great human being. Very, very nice guy. Very likable, you know. And um, you know, and I'm glad to see that he's having his, um, you know, his time at, at has his shine going on right now and. You know, and um, and having a lot of success. I mean, so you know, I, I like working on a lot. Yeah, and Fernando, you you switched not too um, not too long ago over to to Virgil. Uh, how's that transition go, and what's he meant to to uh, your overall game? Well, you know, it's like um, he he contacted me, and we were we were always talking. Um, you know, it's, it's a small world, so in boxing, you know everybody, you know. And um and then you know it's just the energy and the and the and the way that he was talking to me just made he made a lot of sense. Um, I'm the type of fighter that um that I question a lot, you know. And he's the type of coach that he likes when um boxers question because then they truly know. So um the positive energy just it, everything just fell in place being with him. Um, and talking to him and all that stuff. So we uh, we made the arrangement. And, you know, like right now um, all I want to do is just um, if I'm, if I'm going to go to war, I want to have the best, the best army, the best, the best, just the best attribute um, just, just going in, you know, because I know that I'm a good fighter um, and, and not just the – well, you know, once when I get in the ring um, – it won't just be me, you know. It'll be the right, the right instructions. But then at the end of the day, it's all about me, what I'm gonna do. So I think it's a great team, you know. And it just, everything just felt real good, positive energy. And then we just, we just started working, and and everything else has been great. Right. Did you get to spend a lot of time with uh, Brandon Gonzalez? You know, he was with Jeff last year, and Jeff fired him and kicked him out there to, um, over there to Virgil. So what's it been like with him? <laughs> well, well. Well, it's great. I'm just know, kidding. Um, he didn't. No, I'm just. I'm just kidding. No, he didn't. He didn't fire Brandon. That was a, a bad joke. But no, yeah. Have you spent much time with Brandon? 
Oh uh, yeah, well yeah, of course. You know, we um we work together. Um, great sparring, and and you know it's just everything. Everything is good. You know, um, we're just the, the stable mates and everything, and it's just positive energy. Um, so everything falls yeah. in place. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. You know, I just uh, your thoughts real quick. Looking back, you know, Brandon just had the the win there. Was it two weeks ago? Uh, just sidetrack a little bit. Uh, your thoughts on Brandon and and uh, his you know, how it's turned out for him so far with Virgil. I mean, Brandon. Brandon's a solid fighter. You know, whether he was Virgil, whether he was anyone. But um, I thought that um, I thought that his performance wasn't up to the level where it should have been because I thought he actually fought the wrong fight. I think he stayed inside with the guy too long when he was outside. He was boxing the guy easy. But he stayed inside and was getting caught with, you know, with uppercuts. And it really got, he really got hurt bad at the end of the fight. But, um, you know, but the most important thing is that he won. So, you know, he can, he can move on and go to the next, the next fight and, and perform better. All forgiven. Uh -huh. Um, and, and Fernando, the one thing I know is looking back at your career, you're from Salisbury, Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're proud of that. Uh, you haven't fought there in a while. Is that by design, or is there some plans that you you heading back there at some point in the near future? Well, yeah, of course. You know, um, I had such a uh, a great following in Salisbury. You know, from my from my first fight that I fought there, I had thousands. You know, ten thousand people in in an arena, sold out arenas, and all that stuff. So it was just great, you know. But then the thing is, it's like I can never, uh, um, I can never settle, you know, because for the people in Salisbury and Maryland, they um, they they just didn't like me as a boxer. They liked me as a as a human being. So um, they 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 were proud of me and they were they were um, treating me like a champion already. But the thing is, it's like I I I I didn't want to settle as in like oh well that's the only place that I'm gonna fight. I told them that um I want to get out and bring them the home home title, you know. So right. I'm out there fighting fighting for fighting for them because you know it's like imagine imagine a boxer going into the arena and um uh, and fighting for two or three people, you know. I'm I'm used to I'm every time when I run. Every time when 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 I'm doing anything, I'm used to the people just pumping me up and all that stuff, you know. So I just really, you know, like I, I do it for the people, you know. Other people, they do it for different reasons and all that stuff. Of course, the money's gonna come. So, but 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 I love it when the kids, when I go to the schools and um, I talk to the kids and when I when I went how I've been traveling in D.C. and um, and in, in L.A., and now I got my, my Hispanics there and everybody. And then just like Jeff, um, um, he doesn't know much about me right now. Um, but I love it, you know, because now he, as soon as um, he sees me fighting, then he's going to have more more to say, like, okay, this is what Fernando's going to do. And, and, that's, and that's what a lot of people don't like, but I love that. You know why? Because now it's one more person that knows a little bit more about me. Right. See now, Jeff. I, I, Jeff, I don't like this fight at all, and I'll tell you why. You know, when you when you have these 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 fights, like they're trying, you know, when they're trying to get Pacquiao employed or whatever, there's always, you know, you always fell on one side of the fence. You know, you loved one guy and, or you hated the other. You know, here it sounds like we just have two absolute nice guys, and, and it's really hard to root for either one of them to lose because it, you know, I, what do you think, Jeff? It seems like both of them are just just class guys talking to both of them. Well, yeah. I mean, they both sound like they're class acts, and. You know, and basically, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of the sport as well, you know. But um, yeah. at the end of the day, you still have your own, you still will have your own established fan, fan base. You know, you can have you can have two good guys fight, but still there's somebody got to take, they're going to take a side. So they're still going to yeah, have their of course. own, just, own yeah, fans, just, so. like I tell, just like I tell people, you know, don't feel bad, um, about cheering for me or cheering for Peter Quillen, you know, just like I said, if I wouldn't be fighting him right now, I would be cheering for him, you know. So the thing is, it's just, you know, it's just like it's the sport, man. And um, and when you have two men that think they're the man and and they 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 think they're both champions, then um, we're gonna re have all the respect, you know, uh, and outside of the ring, inside of the ring, you know, because 
I respect everybody, you know. But the thing is, is like um, this, you you can't have two winners, you know. So the thing is, is like once when I get in, you know, like I'm gonna be that man that that we're different, you know. Once when we get in there, we're different because we're we're, we're we we got to be animals in there, you know. All right. Well, well, let me ask you this. I mean, is there any, any pressure on you? Like I said, it seems like you guys are both uh, nice guys, neither one of you trash talking the other. A- ever any pressure to, to kind of, you, you know, even if it's fake, to, to dirty it up a little bit to try to sell some tickets? I, I can't do it. You know what I mean? Um, they, try, they try to make me do it before, and it just doesn't work, you know? Um, they try to make me, they try to make me mug at a person or, or do this or do that. I can't do it. I mean, it's not, it's not me. I let my two fists do the talking. It's like um, it's like a lot of times, you know. I tell them like I'm like a, I'm like a playful pit bull, you know. Um, the pit bull when they, when they, when they get a smaller dog, they tear them up, but all they're doing is playing with them, you know. So that's how that's how I am, you know. I, I came from, I came from Dominican Republic, um, at a um, from Dominican Republic at a young age, you know, coming to America. And then I had a lot of people around me that helped me, welfare and all that other stuff. So I never really had any problems in the streets because I didn't even know what it was. Never really been homeless or anything. So I had a good life. Even even though uh, it was poor for at, at a lot of times, even when I was in Dominican Republic and all that stuff, um, you know, a lot of people grew up with Mercedes and Benz and all that stuff. Well... I grew up with um, I have and and I was okay with it. Now the things that um, that I could provide for myself um, is because it, I could afford it now. But the things that I didn't have back then, um, I didn't need them, you know. And I'm the person that I am now, and I'm not. I can't be fake. I can't. Um, I can't. I'm not gonna look at him and, and and see if oh he's ready or I'm ready. No, no, nah, no. Nah. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be me, and we'll know who's ready. And we'll really know what we have when we step in the ring. You know, you could be right. you could be an animal or and, and and do this, but until you get hit and until you 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 um you feel that power and all that stuff, one somebody's gonna retreat and then they're gonna be like, oh man, I didn't know it was gonna be that hard. You know, so yeah. yeah. Jeff, I think what we need to do here is get on ProBoxingInsider.com and just make up an article. You know, have Fernando just just misquote them. You know, have him talking trash about Cuba and, and all that kind of stuff. What do you think? Oh, yeah, you know what's funny? The the funny thing is, 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 is this is almost like you two guys are like mirror images of each other. I mean, Peter was exactly like you. Peter's not going to get out of character just to sell a fight. He's a guy who he is what he is, and he's fine with that, you know. And it's, and I'm hearing the exact same thing from you, and I mean, and, and basically, at the end of the day, that's what it's about anyway. It's about the fight. It's not about, you know, trying yeah. to because at the yeah. end of the day, you want to walk away with that championship, you know. And so yeah. basically, yeah. And, and in order to get it, you got to fight for it. And, and like you said, yeah. let your fist do the talking, and when the smoke, and when the smoke clears. You know, either you'll be champion or you won't. But you don't have nothing. You know, you don't you don't have to bad mouth anyone or anything like that. Because at the end of uh, the day, it's it's a, it's a job. It's a job that it's, you guys It's, a, it's to a job. And 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 then yeah. I remember the first time when I fought in Salisbury, and um, I never even knew I had a lot of fans. You know, um, because you're not supposed to see it. People, you're not so. It's like it's like a lot of times when um, when people say, "Oh man, you're a humble man." You don't. It's like you can't say you have class. You show class, you know. And um, I can't say, oh, I'm humble. I gotta be humble. I gotta show that I'm humble, you know. So when a lot, when 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 I fought my fight in Salisbury, I I knew I had a couple of fans, but I didn't know I had thousands, you know. And then um, um, right now, if people are gonna show, um. Um, I appreciate it because the economy is so bad right now that somebody that pays even the lowest ticket, you know, if, if they pay a ringside seat or, or they pay, they, as long as they pay what they can afford, and all I need is one or two people. As long as I know that those two people came all the way from California just to see me, um, um, all the way from, from Maryland just to see me, 
um, uh, the least thing that I could do is just give them a good show. You know, that's all I could do. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the one thing I like to ask you about Fernando is, is, you know, a few years ago you were like, you know, one of the hot prospects. You know, you were a lot of buzz around you. Then you ran into, uh, I think you were 21, 22 and 0, whatever it was, and then you ran into Grady Brewer, and, and that didn't quite go your way. And you kind of, you know, it seemed like for a while up till now you kind of fell off the radar. It's like people dismiss you from one uh, one unfortunate performance. Uh, you know, just your thoughts on that fight, and, and how did that affect you uh, mentally? Well, you know, when when you have a fight like that, like, and then you're an amateur star, you know, that you won the USA's and you go to the Olympic trials and all that stuff, and then you feel that you never lost because, you know, even when you win, lose a decision in the amateurs, you feel like you got robbed or whatever, so it's not like you lost. So now when you turn as a professional and um, and then you lose, everybody sees you and you're one of the hottest prospects and everything, and then you lose, it, it, it could kill you, you know. It could either make you or kill you. And then the thing is, it's like um, I try to explain to my dad a lot of times when I tell him, you know, you ne- like when you're a little kid, you can never, you never think that you could die, you know, you know because you're, you, you don't understand the, 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 the action about dying and all that stuff. So when, as a pro- professional, I never thought that I could lose, ever, you know. But then when I knew as a little kid that I could die, then I'm like, oh, man, I've got to be careful now or, or i got to be smarter now and all that stuff. So I think that loss right there made me into a man. You know, it made me realize that um, you're not just going to get the title. <laughs> you you got to fight with everybody. You you can't underlook anybody and, and say, hey, he's a... He's he's a he's a mop or or whatever you know. You gotta fight. You gotta be careful even with the guys that can't fight. You know. So um, it made me it made me um, more respectful. It made me um, um, it made me into a better man because now I'm thinking outside of boxing. You know, I'm thinking about speaking my mind as I'm like taking control of my own career. Um, I haven't been. Um, when I was fighting, if you see my record and everything, I've been fighting um, in, one six, in 160 my whole fight. And, and if you go even back, I was fighting in 165 since I was like 16, 17 years old, you know. And the thing is, is I'm not the biggest middleweight, but I've always been uh, middleweight, you know. I've always been a 165 pounder, 160. So dropping that weight, you know, uh, made a little, little difference on me, and um, I should have spoke up on it, um, but I didn't because the type of person that I am, you know, I was a yes sir, you know. So um, now I'm becoming a yes sir to only Fernando Guerrero, you know, and um, and that attribute puts in into um, my my boxing too, you know. So now it's uh, it's being smarter. Yes, I, I've never fought anybody that is stronger or faster than me. But now, you know, it's not, it's not about the speed or power. It's about when you use the speed and power. So, you know, it's just things like that that it just makes you grow up. A lot of, a lot of people, they put you down because you lost one fight or two. But the thing is, it's like um, my last name is, 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 is Guerrero. My last name is Warrior. And like I said, I don't like to say it. I would like to show it. So even if I go out, you know, I would like to go out as a warrior, you know. So um, right. me and me and Peter Quillen, um, it's an honor for me to to have a war, you know. It's a, it would be an honor for me to just go out and give it all I got, you know, because those are the classic fights that I want. Um, it's like it's just those moments that you want because now it's real. Like I like I said before, I want to see what I'm made of. I, can, I, I don't want to say what I'm made of. I want to really see. And once when I win this fight, I still want to see. I want to fight those fights that I'm like, you know what, that I can feel good about myself. Uh, now, now, Jeff, any, uh, when you have a fighter like Fernando, has got all the talent in the world, and he suffers a, a loss like that, I'm not, I'm not talking about someone at the end of the career, but someone like Fernando who's in the prime and, and you know, is on the, or is on the way up, uh, how, how do you handle a fighter coming off a loss like that, get him motivated and get him set back in the right track to to uh, to do better in the future? 
plumbing. Basically, you gotta you gotta you know take a step back for a little bit and you know put him in with weaker opposition to you know to mentally get his mind back on you know on the, on the winning track and also you know um, you know and to to build his confidence. So I mean that's that's the best process is because now the fighter you know who has lost now all of a sudden realize like he said that he's not invincible and that he can't be beat. But you give him the swagger back by putting him in there with someone that you know he can he can regain his confidence with. You know maybe one or two fights and then you know back on to you know to the mission that was at hand. Yeah. Uh, now, hey, you know, Fernando, a lot of people think that you didn't deserve this shot right here. Uh, like I said, a lot of people kind of dismissed you after that loss. Or what do you have to say to those people? And, and you know, I mean, obviously you're planning on proving them wrong, but, you know, uh, just, yeah, just thoughts and comments on people that thought you weren't, you know, really the person for the job right now. Well, the thing is, it's like I'm, uh, I would like to apologize to those people. I'm not, I don't have that type of power that they think that I do. Um, everybody's um, 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 could have their own opinions. You know, I'm just grateful that um, that I'm in the position that I'm in. And um, well, February the ninth. Um, hopefully, I could just tell them like, okay, like I like I do deserve it. You know. Yeah. And then you know, it's long term goals. Obviously, your short term goal is the WBO uh, middleweight championship here in February ninth. But but you know, just. Long term, you know, when when you walk away from the sport, uh, anything specifically you want to say that you did? Um, I'm sorry, any hearing? I'm just, you know, obviously your short term goals are to win the championship here on February 9th. But you know, when you walk away and whenever that is from the sport, uh, just you know, long term goals, things that you're going to be able to look back and say, "Wow, I can't believe I did that," or "Or I did reach my goals." You know, what what do you want to to have accomplished? Well, well, I, what what I want to accomplish is just. Uh, be be like that, Sammy Sosa. You know, that that pride, that 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 Dominican pride, that um, Salisbury, Maryland pride, that East East Coast pride. You know, a lot of people don't understand, but um, um, you know, when you become worldwide, like um, I fought. Yes, I fought a lot on um, on on Maryland, but um, it's it's all the East Coast, East Coast, West Coast. So I just want to make, I just want to bring that positivity. To, to the people, you know, that different thing. It's, um, you don't have to come from from the streets or or, or from from bad connections or anything like that. You know, you could be just a guy that's just trying to make his dream, you know. You don't have to have those sad stories. You don't have to get shot two or three times. Just stay in school and, um, and, 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 and try to make your parents proud, try to make yourself proud. That's all. Well, you know, Jeff, like I said, I, I can't think of uh, any two fighters that we've had that are probably uh, sound nicer than Peter Quillen and Fernando Guerrero. So I think it's going to make for a great fight. You know, it, it doesn't. You don't always have to have two people uh, uh, being total jerks and, and you know calling each other names and that kind of stuff. So it's actually going to be a very interesting fight. And uh, Jeff, just final thoughts before we let Fernando go here on 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 their fight coming up February ninth. Well, I just you know I wish him I wish him all the best. And um, you know, hopefully, fulfill his dream. Yeah. And and Fernando, for the folks that are interested in the fight, just one more time, uh, you know, where they can get tickets or watch it, and then also you do the social media thing where they can catch you on Twitter, or Facebook, or, or whatever you're doing. Fernando. Hey, we lost it. He's online. Oh, no, we just lost Fernando. So let me see. I'll try to get him back here real quick here. Um, we'll get him right back there. Just like uh, one second for that. So, Jeff, just uh, while I'm doing that, while I'm getting Peter back on there, um, just tell us about uh, about Oklahoma and, and this fight coming up. Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, I don't know who the guy most fighting, but... Um, Coleslaw. Huh? <laughs> Coleslaw. Coleslaw, that's Coleslaw. the Mo calls him. Oh, Cole's yeah. That's why. That's what he did say. But uh, I still. I mean, I haven't had a chance to see no footage of him. Right. Don't know anything about him. So I mean, I'm yeah. just preparing. Right, hold on, Jeff. We got Fernando. Fernando, uh, Jeff. I just wanted to, Fernando. Are you back with us? 
Yes, yes. I, I just wanted to give you a proper send off there. So um, I don't know if you heard me or not, but just for the folks, uh, one more time where they can catch you uh, this fight on, on TV or, or get tickets, and also if you do the social media thing, where they can catch you on Twitter and then Facebook and that kind of thing. Um, okay, yeah, well, you can find me on, on, on Facebook, Fernando El Guerrero, Fernando El Guerrero. And then um, you can find me on uh, on Instagram F G De La Cruz, and then you can find me on Twitter for um, Fernando um, Fernando Guerrero, and you know it's just it's, yeah. All right. Well, we, you know, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, class guy. We wish nothing but the best for me in the future. We'd love to have you back on at some point. Anything else that you wanna uh, say before we let you go? Well, no, you know, everybody's starting. Um, hopefully, they have a, a good year, and um, and and please catch the fight. All right, buddy. Appreciate it so much, and, and best of luck to you. Okay. okay, thank you. All right. All right, thanks. All right, that was uh, Fernando Guerrero. Thanks so much to him uh, for joining us. Uh, wow, Jeff, quite a nice guy. Him and Peter, that's going to be the battle of uh, two nice guys there. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, uh, Miss Ferreira on the phone here. Uh, Jeff, just go ahead and continue uh, this, this fight with Mo and just give us the, uh, the breakdown there and, and, and what you're expecting. Oh, no, no breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about Mo. Well, I mean, well, one thing about Mo is that Mo's been working extremely hard um, with his boxing and with his jiu-jitsu with pretty much everything. So um, I don't know too much about the other guy, but I know that he better be ready because um, Mo's going to come. Mo's in great shape, and he's ready to fight. Yeah. Oh, I had a little technical difficulty there. Still trying to get Ashley on here. Um, what's that? So, Jeff, tell us uh, what else is going on new in the, in the Mayweather gym there. Um, not really a whole lot going on. I mean, you have uh, Issy Smith, of course, getting ready for his title fight with um, K-9 Bundridge. So, um, you know, it's been some festive sparring with um, him and his sparring partners. Um, and for the most part, you know, um, there's one, two, three, four, five. I mean, Floyd has signed, what? A, lot of, Floyd has signed a lot of the fighters that are actually in the gym. So, you know, he's building his, um, I guess, his his team, you know, of fighters. Um, he's had, like, maybe maybe about six fighters signed now. So, um, I mean, that's that's one of the things that's going on. But, um, yeah. I don't wanna, you know, so, I mean, basically, I mean, other than that, the gym is the gym. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to bring on our next guest right here. We're in a class to join up a little bit. Um, first time on the show, uh, ring card girl for MMA and UFC and, and a boxing junkie, she says. Uh, Ashley Ferreira, welcome to the show. You're on with myself and Jeff Mayweather. Hi, how are you guys doing tonight? Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> good, good. And yourself? Oh, no complaints. I'm uh, I'm in Oklahoma tonight, and it's pretty chilly out, so um, I'm jealous you guys are on the West Coast. No, I'll be in Oklahoma. Yeah, are tomorrow. you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll yeah, are you, are you anywhere near Thackerville, Ashley? You know what? I'm actually about two hours north of there. Are you going to be at the Bellator fight? Yeah. That should be a good time. That's a great casino. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know how much you follow the MMA stuff, but uh, with, uh, King Mo actually trains his boxing with Jeff, so, so he's going to be there in the corner for King Mo. That is awesome. Well, you will not be disappointed. That casino, it it uh, it's beautiful on the inside and the outside. So I hope everybody in Oklahoma treats you very well. Uh, so, so you're at a Hooters tonight, right? Oh, sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. No, I said I've been to Oklahoma once. I used to train um, George. I can't George his name. to do a new <laughs> crazy yeah, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, but he's. Uh, He's from Oklahoma as well. So he's an Indian fighter. Uh, he George, is, and he will be. I have ring carded some of his fights. He'll actually be fighting on Friday night fights. Uh, yeah, he's fighting um, Delvin Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, they call him Comanche Boy here. 
Yeah, that is come his nickname. Yeah. How you yeah. train him too? Oh well, he uh, certainly has a very impressive record, so um, that definitely speaks volumes about you. Yeah, well, he's, he's a good fighter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it'll be exciting right, to watch right. him on Friday Night Fights. Definitely. Yeah. So, so yeah, tell us a little about you, Ashley. Uh, you do the, the the boxing and MMA. So just to the folks that aren't aware of you, that you know that 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 miss that, uh, tell us a little about yourself. Well, you know, I, uh, I I love ring carding for boxing especially. I do do a few MMA fights, but mostly boxing. Um, it's such a great sport, and it's one that I love to watch. So when I ring card, I get great seats, which is a huge bonus for ring carding. Um, right up and close with the action. You know, I've gotten blood dripped on me before, and it, it's pretty exciting. Um, I'm in my last semester of law school, so y'all better watch out. <laughs> Whoa, that well, see now, now there you go. You got a built-in lawsuit. You know, you you, you ogle the the ring card girl, and you get you get sued. See, you got a, everything. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? Some uh, of the have... some of the some of the great boxing promoters are attorneys. Bob Arum is an attorney. Lou DeBello is an attorney. So maybe I'll just become a promoter one day. Yeah, you never know. It's, it's like, uh, um, do, do you have one that you prefer more? I mean, you said you do more of the boxing, but do, do you have a, a preference in boxing or MMA? Well, you know what? It's funny. We uh, we just went to the Strike Force finale when it was in Oklahoma City, and, um, you know, we had a good time there, but there's just something amazing about the atmosphere at a boxing fight that I just didn't feel when I was there, so I would have to say that I really, I really do love boxing, and um, I would absolutely go to an MMA fight, you know, uh, if I didn't have tickets to a boxing fight that night, but <laughs> um, my first love would definitely probably have to be boxing. Hey, Jeff, let me ask you this. I don't know if you had a chance to go check out some of Ashley's pictures, but she's, she's certainly uh, a head turner. Uh, there ever been an instance in, in a fight where either you or, or even worse, one of your fighters, and I, and I can think of one specifically, um, not, <laughs> not involving you, but where uh, the, the ring card girl has kind of distracted the, either you or a fighter? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say they distracted me, but um, I was always, any anytime I was a fighter, I mean, I was aware of the ring card girls. I mean, most of the time, <laughs> only time you're not really aware of the ring card girls being in the ring is usually when you're the one get you you're you're the one that's being beat up because you are getting you know uh, a a cut attended to or something like that. But I think most fighters are aware the ring card girls. At some point in time, right. you actually take a look at the ring card girls as they walk as they walk around the ring. You know, it's not like right. you're just I, so focused about boxing that you don't realize what's going on. <laughs> I know. Uh, a couple of months ago in the um, the Matisse uh, Jose fight, um, I, I can't remember his name, but the guy that I believe it was the yeah Jay Leon Love, the guy that was disqualified him um, for fighting him, he actually was a after the announce he was actually hitting on the girl in the ring while they were announcing the decision. It's absolutely bizarre. <laughs> um, cool. You know that he was that focused on the girl. <laughs> What's that? Cool. Yeah, it was. I can't remember the guy's well, name, but it was whoever it was. I have it. actually heard a ring card girl hitting on a fighter while in the ring once, so I would say anything is possible. Oh well, well, give us give us the details. You don't have to tell the names, but you know, give us the details of that. <laughs> well, I was at a fight, and it uh, it was on Showtime, and we were standing behind the fighter as they were announcing his name, and the Showtime camera, you know, was filming us. And the girl yelled out, will you do body shots with me after the fight? And I thought, oh, no. And, of course, the camera then switches away. Uh, probably not something that you really want the ring card girl saying um, on TV like that. Any, but it, it was funny uh, in retrospect. Any, any uh, particular... <laughs> Any particular stories with you that are interesting, uh, one way or the other? Well, you know, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to tell my story without giving the person away. So I, <laughs> I'm gonna not tell that one. 
Um, but All I will right. say that you know it it does it does happen. I mean, ring card girls are very pretty, and you know the boxers are the heroes of the day, so they always want to take the the pretty girl out. But um, for the most part, it's probably it's probably a, it probably occurs a little less than you might think. Um, I haven't really partied with boxers a lot afterwards. Um, I think the production too busy studying for law the, school, right? <laughs> well, you know, the media guys and the, the production crews, they're all usually awesome. And, um, right. you know, as you know, I'm sure as you guys know, but as you go to different fights, you get to meet friends, and um, it's always a nice little reunion. The fighters always change, but the production crews, you know, for Showtime or um, HBO are usually the same. So that makes it pretty awesome to see those people over and over again. Right. Um, you know, you mentioned how, how pretty they are, but, you know, it's for some reason Las Vegas, which is filled with lots of pretty girls, I, too many times I'm, I'm absolutely disappointed by the ring card girls. Uh, what, what goes into to selecting them? Do they just uh, does it depend on the, the venue or, or the, the promotion or, or, you know, just explain how, how, becoming, how you become a, a ring card girl? That's a great question because it's one of the biggest things that boxing needs to change. Um, the way that most ring card girls are chosen, especially for local events, is that they will have the local promoter go out and find some girls, whether it's friends that he knows or they'll use a local advertise or a local modeling agency or something. But you see what the UFC does, you see what Strike Force does, you see what Bellator does. I mean, every time you walk into any kind of newsstand, Ariane Celeste, Brittany Palmer, you know, the UFC ring card girls, they're front and center. And boxing absolutely needs to get some of these, uh, you know, named ring card girls that people can identify with. It's, it's definitely a marketing value that's untapped. And it's probably the one thing that I am just most passionate about. So I'm so happy that you asked about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the problem there, and Jeff, you can probably speak better on this than I can. But you know, when you have Bellator and you have uh, UFC or, or Strike Force, it, it's it's one central organization promoting their brand. So you know, when I see Ariana Celeste, I, I know that's UFC. However, with boxing, you have you know different promoters, you have different uh, organizations. So it's 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 hard to promote one particular person. You know, it's, everyone's more concerned with themselves than they are promoting the sport in general. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts on that? I think I think when it comes to boxing, it just seems like it's more about the fight itself and not so much about, you know, the wing card girls. But, I mean, I think that, just like she said, that maybe if, you know, they would use, you know, particular wing card girls, I mean, they would become more of an attraction themselves and, and actually a part of the event. Right. That's exactly true. I completely agree. Because, um, I mean, Top Ranking Golden Boy are two of the biggest promotional companies, and they could definitely get one or two girls to represent them. And, you know, you, you say that UFC and Strike Force, you know, Ariane is UFC, but there's no reason that Top Rank can't have a named girl. And the amount of marketing dollars that these girls could pull into this sport, you may be able to develop programs like pension and benefits um, with extra dollars around. It it could be great for everybody. <laughs> right. You know, and then considering your, your boxing and uh, your audience is, you know, 90% male or whatever it is, that, you know, having pretty girls forward there, uh, representing your brand can be a bad thing, you know, they're going to get paid attention to. And I'm sure they're making, you know, I mean, UFC is making money off Ariane. There's no doubt about that. You know, it's great for her. She's getting popular and she's famous. But uh, no doubt about it, they're they're capitalizing on that and they're selling the calendars and, and whatever else. So they're, you know, they're certainly benefiting from, from her popularity. Yeah, and you might even be able to pull in new fans. I mean, the ring card girls, they develop a fan base. Uh, the UFC ones, yeah. they develop a fan base. And people will go to see them and, Pulling any younger crowd to, you know, really develop the sport going forward and come to the event, boxing's kind of an older crowd. And if we had a younger demographic coming in, even if it is at first to see the ring card girls, they find fighters they like and they keep coming. And that's what I think would be a great benefit. All right. Uh, last thing I want to ask you about that, and we'll get into some boxing talk because, you know, Jeff, 
Jeff, you know, he doesn't he doesn't uh, take anyone too doesn't get too warm with anyone until he knows how well they know their boxing. So we're gonna have to test you out here. Um, but uh, just as far as you know, how did you get involved? You know, when did you decide it was something you wanted to do? And and just you know, how do you enjoy the experience? I mean, basically you're you know you're up front and center there without much clothing on for everyone to see. So just read the overall experience for yourself. You know what? The most it's always so fun to do events and the big fights. Um, you know, I did Chavez Jr.'s fight last year in uh, San Antonio, and the crowd gets so excited that the one thing I always think is, don't trip. <laughs> just please don't fall. And then I always tell myself, if I fall, I just have to smile and I'm getting back up. And, you know, as long as I don't make a big deal out of it, hopefully the crowd won't as well. So. Uh, it's definitely something I love doing and, and hope to uh, do going forward. And I'm kind of hoping that Jeff is kind to me in this next segment, <laughs> knowing that I'm also studying for law school. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he's not kind at all. He's one of the, unlike Fernando Guerrero, he's probably one of the meanest people you'll ever meet. So you got to be careful with Jeff, but we'll, we'll try to make sure he's nice to you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I will just plead the fish if I have to, I guess. No. Um, first, I guess, you know, we'll start with you, Jeff. The one thing on the show is surprising. We, we hardly ever talk about um, Floyd. So, you know, let's get into that a little bit. Um, you know, we've known for a while that he's fighting on May 4th, but, but still no, no opponent. You know, there's been rumors. Is it Canelo? Is it Robert Guerrero? Now we're talking Tim Bradley. Um, just, you know, I know you don't know who it is, but, but why is there such a delay in this uh, announcement? Um, I think maybe Floyd just wants it to be that way. But, I mean, chances of it being Tim Bradley are almost slim and none. We know that. I mean, they just, you know, Bob M doesn't put his fighters in with Floyd. So that's not going to happen. So that's one. Right, well, that's one. The, the one. I said right. that Bob, Bob M does not do business with Floyd. So Tim Bradley's not fighting Floyd. Right. Well, you know, that's, that's the one thing, uh, you know, I read uh, Dan Raphael's blog the other day, and he talked talking about the possibility of being that. You know, this, he, he mentioned, you know, obviously that, uh, you know, Floyd has a, you know, a rough relationship with, with top rank, but perhaps, you know, he threw out there that that was one of the reasons why the fight hasn't been announced because they're, they're undergoing some, you know, uh, very sensitive and delicate negotiations and, and trying to work this out. So, I mean, you just have to refuse that. I think there's no way that he's ever going to fight a top rank guy. I don't Plus think Manny, so. I guess, at some point. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, when they had Manny and they didn't make the fight with Manny, the fight's never going to be made. I mean, Tim Bradley, Tim Bradley don't can't sell it, can't sell out five thousand homes. So, I mean, that that fight won't happen. All right, uh, Ashley. Let's just let's turn it over to you there. Who who would you like to see him fight? Uh, you know, like I said, all the names that have been out there. Um, I guess from a fan standpoint, then if you know if you were Floyd himself, you know which path would you take? Well, see, I look at this as I want whatever fight is going to get the most amount of the mainstream audience who doesn't typically tune into boxing to watch the fight. If that mainstream crowd still wants to see Floyd fight Pacquiao, that's what I want. If they want to see him fight somebody new. That's what I want. But I think it's really important for boxing. You know, it's kind of at a phase right now where they really need to generate new fans, particularly younger fans, and people who are excited about continuing the sport going forward. Um, MMA is on such a, an awesome run that to really compete with it, you need to get a little bit more mainstream. Um, you know, they've done some great things on NBC Sports, having it on, uh, you know, Saturday afternoon and and I think continuing things like that would be great. So whatever whatever everybody else wants is absolutely what I want. Uh, I don't know, Jeff. She 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 demonstrated some knowledge there, but she she kind of copped out and just said whatever everyone else wants. I, I don't think that's good enough, right? Well, uh, as a ring card girl, as a ring card girl, I want whatever's going to get the most amount of rounds. So <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> the most he amount of rounds. He's not going to get knocked out. <laughs> that, that is truly, that is truly a wing card girl talking. Because <laughs> the corner, they want as least rounds as possible. <laughs> and the fight want as least rounds as possible. 
<laughs> she, she, yeah, fun. I can see her whispering over to you, Jeff. You know, hey, Jeff, slow your guy down. I want this to go three more rounds at least so I can get out there a couple more times. <laughs> well, you know, a ring car girl's a ring car girl's worst nightmare is a first round knockout because you don't walk the first round. So you can have a huge title fight and never step foot in the ring. <laughs> Yeah, that's well, you, you do after the, when the, the decision's announced, right? You, you're in there. It's just not the same. It's just not. Nobody, nobody you'll, is you'll cheering for you. They're cheering for the fighters. Yeah, you're getting a chance to strut. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we don't get paid. By, we don't get paid by the round. So you know the more rounds, I, I don't get paid any extra for that. So it's it's because I love it, which is why I would want it to go more rounds. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so Jeff, you know, Bradley's, you know, according to you, there's no chance that's going to happen. So are you still sticking, you know, with Guerrero as the most logical opponent? Um, I think so. I think he's probably the most logical. I mean, it's only really, I mean, you know, there's basically him or, or Canelo. Yeah. So, I mean, most of them are kind of saying it's it. No, go ahead. Oh, see, no, yeah, it just, just it. seems, you know, the, the most common uh, train of thought is that it's going to be Guerrero here in, in uh, May, or, uh, yeah, uh, May and then Canelo in the fall. So, you you, you know, that seems logical, like I said. I, I just, Guerrero to me it just seems like that's such a, you know, I don't want to see it. I mean, you know, obviously Guerrero's done some nice <laughs> things here recently, but it just seems like such a, such a, I don't want to say easy fight because no fight's ever easy, but it just seems like yeah, he can do better than that, but, you know, Hey, whatever's bringing the dollars, right? Well, I mean, I think the thing is that, you know, before, before Guerrero got the win of Roberto, I mean, I think that it was perceived that way. But now, after beating Berto, and, you know, in the way that he beat Berto, I think that there's a lot of people that, you know, are, you know, are basically on the bandwagon now of Guerrero and, and probably feel yeah. that he does have a chance. Yeah. Uh, Ash, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, obviously the Manny Pacquiao lost his last fight there. There's been a lot of talk whether he should continue to fight. Um, your thoughts on him? You know, do you want to see him continue to fight? And, and do you think that that he can uh, re restore the restore his career and and maybe one day get that shot with with Floyd and and have those two square off? Well, you know, I I kind of made a joke joking tweet after I saw that fight that said maybe he does need to get back to his vices to. Uh, uh, start fighting well again, but I uh, I think more, you know, I'm thinking about your previous question, and I would definitely love to see uh, Floyd fight Canelo, if not in May, definitely in September, because the the awesome crowd that Canelo brings, uh, you know, the Mexican fan base on, on uh, Independence Day, it's an electric atmosphere, and even to just the restaurants that show the fights, it's pretty exciting, so um, I would love to see that. But, you know, as for Pacquiao, he really does have some other career ambitions, and if, if that's what he wants to do and, you know, maybe that's what he should do. It's, it's very noble being a, a public servant, and, um, you know, I, I think that he should definitely pursue that if he wants. So I did hear some talk about uh, – him being upset about the taxes being high in the U.S., so that if he did fight, he would probably want to do it outside of the U.S. So maybe we could also get some tax exemptions going in there. <laughs> well, no, I, I think you're being a little hypocritical, though. You know, you, you're, you're kind of saying that that you know maybe he's distracted by doing two things at once. But yeah, here you are being a ring curl, ring card girl, and doing law school. Is that do you find that distracts you? And do you think that you're not quite able to live up to your full potential as a ring card girl because you're distracted by law school? Well, I am not getting punched <laughs> in the face, so I think that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> uh, all I have to do is walk around in heels, and that is way easier. Uh, so I think that makes it easier to balance things. It's always a hard balance, and, you know, I didn't get to go out to Vegas this year uh, for the, or I guess in December for the Pacquiao fight. Uh, because I had finals, and that was pretty disappointing. But, you know, I am so close to being finished that that doesn't really matter anymore. And I will uh, I will be an attorney and, and, uh, and ring card girl. So I think I've got it balanced all right. 
Well, I'm sure your your cheesy lawyer commercials like they always have, you know, for every law firm, I'm sure they'll be quite popular when you when you throw those up. A lot better than Glenn Lerner, right, Jeff? <laughs> I can guarantee you that I will never be on one of those. <laughs> Oh, I'll that, never like, be on one of those. <laughs> you can be like, oh, yeah, I don't Jeff, you know, going back to Pacquiao, yeah, just, you know, uh, what do you think? You know, yeah, like Ashley touched on it, I wanted to bring that up about the, the dual thing and you know, him being involved in politics and, and seeing something like since he got, you know, really involved in that, his, you know, his uh, abilities in the ring have slipped. Um, you know, if he does continue, do you think he can do do so successfully, uh, you know, juggling both those things at the same time, or, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, to be honest, I think that you can you you can juggle the two things at once if if it's something that you really want to do. I mean, it's not like boxing takes, you know, a whole lot of your day. I mean, you may train two hours a day. That's it. So I mean, yeah. something's wrong. You got to be focused, but at the same time, you know. He's been fighting for I don't know how many years, so that that's nothing. So I mean, he can do the both. It's just it's just that people have a tendency to think that you can't because oh, you have to focus on this. You no, you don't have to focus. If you've been boxing all your life, as long as he's been boxing, he don't have to focus on boxing. Only thing he needs to do is get in the gym and work hard and do what he needs to do and come home and do what he needs to do as far as being, you know, a politician, it's no big deal. Okay. You know, and I think that's the, the, the thing that a lot of fans don't realize. They they don't really know what goes on in the gym. You know, we're we're raised on, on Rocky, and we think that it's, you know, you wake up at 5 a.m., you know, eat some raw eggs and run, you know, 20 miles, and then you spend all day chasing chickens and, and working out and chopping lumber and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, it's a full-time, you know, 12 hour a day thing and it, and like you said you know it's not really necessarily that you have you you know usually they'll have um you know just a few hours of work you know come you know might change it come uh, fight time but it's it's not all consuming where you can't do anything else no no I mean don't get me wrong I mean you gotta get up you do your road work after you do your road work I mean depends on how your regimen is sometimes you have people that have a strength trainer and then they'll do their strength training work and then they go to the gym but what I'm saying is that as long as he's been boxing, that that structure won't actually, it won't really matter as much because he, he knows what he has to do. As a fighter, he knows what he has to do. As a politician, he probably doesn't know. You know, so right. that, would be, that would be more, I think that would be more difficult for him than the boxing, you know, preparing for a fight. Right. Now, actually, let me ask you this: How, how often do you um, do you work? Uh, are you ring card girl? And does your preparation, like like a boxer, does it change? Come close closer to to fight time, so you can get in tip top shape. <laughs> well, la uh, last spring semester was the hardest. Um, I think in it was eight weeks. I was traveling for seven of them, and by the end of it, I was so tired. Um, you know, I was in almost a different city every weekend doing a fight. I, but I got to do some really cool things. You know, I ring carded at the uh, USA National Championship, um, you know, the Travis Jr. fight, and just a lot of great events. So my training really has more to do with making sure that I'm keeping up with my schoolwork and making sure that I'm handling all of the other things that go along with it, like uh, remembering to eat right when I'm on the road <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. But um, you know, you got you got to look it up there, so you cannot forget to do that. And it's also something that I, that I enjoy to do. I mean, Jeff hit it right on the head. If you are not passionate about it, then it doesn't matter how much time you have to do it because you're not going to give your 100% anyway. So if you want to do it, then you will definitely make a way to do it. So, I mean, you know, this Thursday I had class all day, but then on Thursday night it is the – Oklahoma City Charity Fight Night, and uh, Boom Boom Mancini will be in town hosting that. Um, and I'll be one of the, the hostesses there as well. So, you know, I have time to do that because I got the rest of my work done all this week. Right. Any, any particular uh, – uh, well, first of all, what was your favorite event you've ever worked for at? And then, you know, who are some of the active guys that are, you're a big fan of, a big fan of? 
My favorite venue would absolutely have to be the Alamo Dome because I had been to um, the Alamo Bowl there and, you know, seen a football game there. I'd seen the Women's Final Four there. And to me, it was always just such a special place, first of all, because it's in Texas and I'm from Texas. Second off, because it's such a huge boarding venue that so many people know that it was really special to me to actually get to be a part of um, an event there. And there was just something about looking out into the crowd and just seeing people about as far as your eye could see that really made it special. Um, man, you're, you're not really going to make me pick one person that I like, are you? No, I said name a few. We won't. Now, I know you can't name a person. As it's obviously you've shown you can't do that with, with naming an opponent, so we'll let you throw a few out there. <laughs> well, I will, I will name my uh, my former, I mean, he doesn't fight anymore, but Larry Holmes is definitely my favorite boxer. He's uh, one of the funniest guys I think I've ever uh, seen on TV, and uh, I, I think he's pretty awesome. Yeah, actually, we had Larry Holmes on, on a few months ago, and, and I got a chance to meet him out here before that, and uh, very surprised. You know, you, you had this perception, you know, of a guy being one way and totally opposite. Uh, he, he was an absolute pleasure. He was singing and, and dancing and, you know, and, and couldn't have been nice for everybody. So, you know, yeah, he, he's a class guy, and he's, he's certainly a, a, someone that I'm a big fan of, and Jeff as well. Yeah, and um, I do. I mean, I do have a few local fighters that I also do like to follow. Um, Adam Lopez is uh, one of the fighters that I follow. He's been on a couple of undercards that I've done. He's one of the nicest kids that I have ever met, and he works probably harder than um, anybody also that I know. And and so I, I think I follow people who um, you know may not be. Uh, fighting on the uh, televised portion of events, but are just people who have really been good to me along the way and, and have, I've seen them work absolutely the hardest. Right. See, see, now, Jeff, I didn't hear a Floyd Mayweather in there. I didn't hear a Celestino Caballero or, or uh, you know, any of the guys you work with, Jeff, so I don't know. Well, that would be sucking up. I'm not, I mean, please, people can see <laughs> through that. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> Well, that, that's the, that's the whole purpose of the show. We just we're just here to suck up the Jeff, you know, and, and, and kiss ass any way possible, right? He demands that, so no. you know it, it's really tough to, to deal with. I already said he made an excellent. <laughs> point. Was that not enough? <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know what? You know what? You know what's ironic? Okay. Did you say? Well, then, well then, why don't then why don't you ask Oops. me who my favorite trainer is? <laughs> there you go. Roger, Roger Mayweather, right? <laughs> it would be Jeff Mayweather. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff, what were you going to say? No. She was, said, she was speaking about um, Ray Mancini doing a movie. Yes. Was, he uh, will is be in a box, Is there another boxing movie? Uh, I didn't catch that last part. No, I said, is it a box? No, I don't think he's in it, Jeff. I think he's hosting it. He's not actually in it, right, Ashley? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Um, he will be in town hosting a uh, charity oh, okay. that we do. Um, I just read an article in the paper that he actually grew up with the Stoops brothers who are here in Norman coaching the OU football team. And uh, so I guess it will be very cool for him to come down here and see them and host our fight night. And uh, it benefits the Police Athletic League here in Oklahoma City, so it's, it's a really cool that he, he's come down for that. Yeah, yeah, he's a very nice guy. I actually did a movie with him. Um, did you? Do you yeah, think he'll sign um, my book if I ask him? Will you do what? Do you think he'll sign my book if I ask him? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm sure he will. He's a very, very nice guy. If I say, hey, Ray, I know Jeff Mayweather, will you sign my book? Will that be enough? Yes, that'll get you in. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's and, another uh, I'm, great sure, I'm sure you won't need any. I'm sure you won't need any tricks to get him to sign your book. You just ask him. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to. <laughs> so, so, See, you, so you live there in Oklahoma City, huh? Yeah, just south of Oklahoma City. Yeah, actually, I met my wife at, she was going to central Oklahoma there. I met her in, in uh, Edmond. Wow. Well, that is, uh, Edmond is definitely one of the nicest parts of town, so you have good taste, and I'm sure that your wife does as well. 
Well, well, she was there studying on a, on a scholarship from Panama, and that's where, yeah, I met her there. And I'm actually from, I lived in uh, Texas as well. Where are you from there? Houston. And I, hey. and I lived in spring when I went to high school, so. Away! Hey, Ashley, don't, awesome. don't believe that story, because I remember <laughs> what he told me. He told me he met his wife under the bridge. <laughs> are you calling my wife a troll? I'm going to get her on here, Jeff. I didn't say she was a troll. I, I don't. Yeah, I think he has some. I think she was under. She was under the bridge. I think. I think she was under the bridge. Why am I the exit with the sign? I think. I think he told a compliment compared to what he was actually saying. I think. I think I. She might have. She might have met me under the bridge, but no, no. She, yeah. she was, uh, yeah, studying English there at, at Central yeah, Oklahoma. I got to go up there. Yeah, it's a real, a real beautiful city. Well, Oklahoma is known for beautiful girls, too. We are actually tied for, uh, I think it's number of Miss USA's with California. So we packed quite a punch for a little date. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, well, actually, you know, that's uh, going to about do it for us. You know, just as far as the, I'm sure you have tons of fans already, but for the, the five people that don't follow you, just, just let them know where they can keep up with you on, on Twitter and Instagram and, and uh, whatever arena you're working at next. Yes, well, um, you can follow me on Twitter. It is My Twitter handle is at Ashley Ferreira, A-S-H-L-E-Y-F-E-R-R-A-R-A. And uh, my Instagram is Ashley Ferreira Model, so same name with model at the end. And um, the next thing that I'll, I will be doing is uh, on Thursday hosting this charity fight night. So uh, definitely looking forward yeah. to that. I'm uh, working on I'm working on letting them have me ring card around. Uh, you know, it's a celebrity ring card round. So we'll see how that goes. I have to convince them that. Uh, I'm cool enough to do it, so we'll see. All right. Uh, Jeff, any, any final thoughts for, for Ashley or anything else to say? Well, I wish Ashley continued success, and I might be needing you one day. I don't know. What kind of turn are you? <laughs> I might <laughs> Yeah, what kind of law are you studying? Well, yeah, well, I would love to come to the next Mayweather fight, and uh, I might even say that he's my favorite if, if I come. <laughs> but uh, I really <laughs> I really yeah, well, what, 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 having what kind of law are you studying, Ashley? What kind of law are you studying? Uh, uh, probably oil and gas contracts. Um, that is, <laughs> I don't think well, I ain't got no oil. I ain't got no oil or even got no gas in my car, so she can't help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just got to find well, it. Being, you know, we'll, we'll just drill for it. <laughs> I guess being in Oklahoma, you're never going to, you know, that's quite a good thing to study because you got uh, abundance of oil there. Um, actually, you know, actually, you know, I'm kind of inspired. I'm going to go watch Legally Blonde now um, <laughs> after having you on. Is it a pretty accurate portrayal? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was that a direct comment or what? <laughs> I was trying to, you know. Well, I'm, no, I'm, actually, actually I'm, you, I'm sure, you know, you, you probably get comments like that all the time, right? I do, actually. And you know what? She was very successful, and she made a lot more money than most of her classmates. So that is not the worst compliment I have ever received. I will tell you that much. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, actually, it was, it was great having you on the show, and we and, Thanks so much for joining us. We'll have you back anytime. You're you're a delight, and uh, best of luck to you. Hopefully, Roy, uh, Ray Mancini signs your book, and and uh, like I said, just a pleasure having you on. Anything else you want to add before we let you go and wrap up the show? No, I just want to say thank you guys again for having me on, and just you know, remind everybody that Jeff Mayweather is my favorite trainer. So um, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And anytime you guys want to be concerned about the ring card girl world, you just let me know, and I will help you all out. Okay. Well, maybe if you ever get to work one of his fights, you'll, you 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 can whisper at him uh, something about body shots during the middle of the fight, and then get him all sidetracked there. <laughs> I will probably wait till after the fight. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, you know, Jeff, we we skipped it with Fernando, but uh, you know, we'll let you go ahead and, and do your your customary dismissal of, of Ashley, and as we let her go and, and wrap up the show. Well, I can't do that to a woman. <laughs> 
Oh, you think I can't take it? Come on. Give me your best you shot. Can, you sure you can take it? You oh, ready? I can. Are yeah, you ready? I'm going to give you a body shot. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Ashley. That was uh, that was Ashley Pereira there. Thanks so much to her and Fernando Guerrero for joining us in the uh, in the first half of the show. Uh, Jeff, anything else to add before we go? Uh, great show tonight and uh, a couple of really good guests. Uh, yes, I enjoyed the show tonight. I think that um, Ashley was very funny and Guerrero was very serious and <laughs> and he was also in a in a strange way very animated. So no, it was a good show. I liked it. Yeah, uh, definitely, and 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 we will see y'all next week. And uh, you know, be sure to check out the the website ProBoxingInsider dot com. Check out Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Mayweather one. Uh, follow Pro Boxing Insiders Twitter at PB Insider. Uh, for Jeff Mayweather, Fernando Guerrero, uh, Ashley Ferreira, we will uh, talk to y'all next week. This is Pro Boxing Insider, or I'm sorry, the Jeff Mayweather Show. Take care. <laughs>